A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have got a very interesting guest, Mr. Dilip Chandak, Managing Director, uh, Vega Auto Accessories Private Limited, famously known as Vega Helmets. Uh, very good morning, Dilip ji. It's good to you know meet you here at your beautiful facility in Belgavi. Uh, I wanted to start our discussion. Can you let our audience know the uh, the founding story of Vega uh, Helmets and the role played by Chandak family to for the growth of the company? Vega started in 1981 mm -hmm. and till 10 years it was run by a group of people and Indrajit Singh was one of the founder who uh, worked, uh, I mean they ran this company. Mm -hmm. In 1991 we took over this company okay. as a Chandak family Okay. and then we used to make 23 helmets to 24 helmets every day. Okay. And from there, uh, we, have, we have four brothers okay. who got involved. Initially, we were two, and uh, with their education, they also participated in the same. Mm -hmm. And we decided that we all will work together okay. and work this. Mm -hmm. Initial stage, because of our uh, inexperience in the industry, it took some time for us. Mm -hmm. And way back in 1991, uh, we we were from Belgaum. Mm -hmm. The ecosystem for helmets was not available here. Yes. So raw materials were coming from far off. Okay. We did not have funds so much to uh, <clears throat> put into the business that we could stock some material. So mm -hmm. most of the time we used to lose out on production. Okay. By the time we order, the transportation is to come. Mm -hmm. So materials were coming from very different parts and not very close also. Correct. Bombay, Bangor was the closest plus Delhi, okay. something was in Bangalore and mm -hmm. all those things, I mean Ahmedabad or wherever. So it was a big challenge to grow this industry very initial stage. So we, we had two challenges, one to have our experience as far as how do we scale this up. Mm -hmm. There was a scope to scale up in okay. this industry. Okay. But unless we don't have uh, mm -hmm. facilities, ecosystem built in and around Belgium, it would have been difficult for us to grow. Yes. So we started investing with the supplier also simultaneously as we were most growing. Mm -hmm. So we built a lot of ecosystem here in Belgaum. Okay. Lot of things we did, we ourselves got involved and we did backward integration like stitching unit and all. Mm -hmm. Because everybody did not have the vision what we had. Those people who remain with us, their supplier with us for last 30, 32 years even today. Mm -hmm. And most of the things we started doing on our own. Mm -hmm. So our major breakthrough started till nine, because way back even sales was not big that Correct. time. Correct. <coughs> we were company manufacturing 24, 25 helmets. Mm -hmm. The cost of production was higher. Yes. Uh, ecosystem was not around. So it took a lot of time for us to get to that competitive price yes. and little scalability. Correct. So, and plus in India, even uh, sales was not there because safety was not the criteria in India, especially with the youth or parents. I mean, yes. in those days, a uh, lot of parents in front of their kids, around 18 years kids also, they used to say, who would like to wear helmets? Right on a the face, they used to say, yes. without realizing that they are, what kind of message they are giving to their children. Correct. So we started marketing more of a designer and a fashion helmets as well, along with the safety. Correct. So there was a section of people that was going motorcycle enthusiastics from 95, 96, 97 who was more like a fashion. Yes. Some sales were there. It took till 2005 to grow to a certain extent. From 2005 there is we saw some kind of a trend changing when Harley Davidson and all started coming in India. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, of course, they came a bit late, mm -hmm. but that bike enthusiasm started building in India. The parents' awareness started. The second generation was born in those 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, when their kids were born, they made sure that at the age of 18, they buy a helmet. Yes. But difficult monitoring whether they'll wear or no. Yes. So that's where the market started growing too. Well, the industry started growing, traffic started building. Mm -hmm. So market also was growing. Correct. 
this is one part. But the other thing was very initial stage when we realized that there is not much big market. We were looking for exports also, and luckily we had some kind of a breakthrough very early from ninety three, ninety four. Okay. Though the quantity used to be small, like three thousand, four thousand, five thousand helmets we used to do. Okay. But that it used to be like over a fifty percent of our production we used to export that time. Correct. But later on, India started growing mm -hmm. in a big way, and mm -hmm. uh, we put all the family put efforts. Uh, each one was specialized. Somebody was looking after marketing. Somebody into finance and designing. One one of my brother Uttam Chanda, he was looking after uh, R and D, mm -hmm. and he brought some lot of innovative products, uh, designing in helmets that became big fashion safety. So we were the trend setter in India. Okay. People followed us. Okay. Eventually. Okay. And because of our exposure to international market, uh, we could bring in lot of ideas and grow the product here. Mm -hmm. Quality was always been our first priority. Correct. Uh, Vega Helmets is a family-owned business. Now the second generation is entering the business or entered the business. So what boost the young blood, you know, coming to the company is giving, and what is your message, you know, as uh, as a head of the company to the people, to the to the, to the young people joining the you know manufacturing force. A one, how you yourself has benefited by you know the, your second generation entering the business, giving a boost to Vega Helmets and to the uh, industry where you know uh, where people are losing the second generation going to other industry rather than joining the workforce sir uh, see we started uh, all four brothers uh, since 91 mm -hmm. uh, i am the elder and in next generation my son is the oldest kunal chandak okay and when he was doing his engineering in Belgaum only, whenever he used to have time, he used to come and spend time in the factory. Okay. And we used to always discuss about business at home among the brothers and he used to be always a part of it. Okay. The second brother's son Parth also, when he went uh, for his studies and all, we, we always told everyone in the second generation, you, are, you can study as much as you want, but even for internship also, there is a lot of scope in our business. Yes. So when my son, as soon as his engineering was completed, he joined business. Okay. Uh, after 20 years of our leading this company, he came in. Mm -hmm. He got involved very much. Mm -hmm. He also was, he could bring in new things, whatever he used to discuss in the college or whatever new management. And that used to motivate us. Correct. I mean, end, end of the day, I see when a next generation came in, we got, instead of we slowing down, we became more aggressive. Oh. Uh, I think when my son joined our company was helmet manufacturing company of not even a thousand helmets a day. Mm -hmm. uh, in 10 years from thousand helmets we have now come to 23,000 to 24,000 helmets manufacturing per day mm -hmm. and with expansion we have a 40,000 helmets per day. Mm -hmm. They brought in a uh, lot of easy uh, way of handling the uh, industry especially with the software, dispatches, management. Mm -hmm. Uh, accountability so this was there mm -hmm. and that helped us also motivate and work more and grow the industry mm -hmm. <coughs> the, uh, Park also joined four years back after he finished his engineering I mean of his management and he started looking after exports and since he joined, uh, we have taken over two companies, one in Spain, okay. Shiro Helmets and one in Canada. Okay. So now we feel uh, we are the most economical manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. We have a designing capability as good as anybody else has in the world. Okay. Uh, the major ex uh, exporters of helmets in the world are from China. Okay. We do equally good quality and economically. So we decided that instead of entering the market to dealers, mm -hmm. we establish our own warehouse. Okay. And we have already taken out two companies okay. for North America and Canada okay. and for Europe. Okay. We are also negotiating with one company in uh, uh, USA. Mm -hmm. In all, um, with the second generation, once they got involved mm -hmm. or we motivated them to get involved, mm -hmm. things are growing and we foresee we see 
this company has a high potential for next 20 to 30 years of growth uh, so this is what it is so my your second question was what kind of message i can give to the industries for the second generation yes. I keep hearing most of the present I see also that second generation are not interested in getting into their parents business. Yes. They feel there is a huge glam, glamour outside rather than they are not looking out for the income right. rather than the lifestyle or whatever it is. Right. But I think they are not seeing it. Yes. Maybe they are seeing my son would have seen only as a father too. If he has to create his lifestyle along with his friends, he can still be, can do it. Yes. Coming to this business does not mean that he has to live a lifestyle like that I or my brothers have lived. Correct. So he can create his own lifestyle. Yes. I mean, his own this thing. Yes. So there is enough glamour. They, they can work smart. Yes. We worked hard, they can work smart second smart. generation. Yes. And they can create a lot of time for themselves. Correct. They can have a lot of help for themselves. And... In fact, what lifestyle they can do, being in parents' business, I don't think so. That is possible for them to work elsewhere, and unless they are called to some kind of a very Correct. high uh, companies, high CEOs, and that kind of. Correct. I, I, that is a totally different yeah. thing. But in our own business, there's a huge potential. Correct. Risk-free, at least I can tell you. Yes. If not anything else. Yes. And they can grow their parents' business, Correct. taking the help of the parents. And my also advice to the parents is allow them to work. Correct. This is what we did. Okay. So we hear them, and then we tell them, "Oh, wow, nice. Why don't you do it?" Correct. You know, so they should do it. Correct. That's also there. It's between both of them, you know. Correct. So my takeaway is, oh, you know. Smart work, uh, listen to uh, you know uh, the young uh, uh, people, take their ideas and young people. These are my key takeaways. So now, uh, uh, Vega has four different manufacturing facilities in Belgavi. So uh, can you elaborate on the on these facilities, the what all you do and how it is helping Vega to grow? All the what sort of technology you have at different facility? See, so basically we have. <coughs> Industries at two different locations. Okay. One is in Belgam and in North India at, in Rudrapur, okay. near Nenital. Okay. And there also we have, uh, we started because of tax holiday. Okay. But tax holiday is over, but we found that it was a very good decision to work. And we are going in for expansion, we have gone in for expansion also there. Correct. Same thing at, uh, in Belgam also. We created two large facilities. Mm -hmm. And lot of other uh, units are to like stitching units and visor divisions to facilitate our own. Uh, it, it's more of a backward integration. Correct. As far as what we have to offer in our helmet industry, I mean, what we have is from the concept to designing to prototyping to mold making to manufacturing. Okay. We have entire facility in house. Okay. So. Our, I, we become very, not only competitive, we become very fast in bringing in the new products. Okay. Atmanirvar. Uh, <laughs> it is definitely Atmanirvar. From day one, there was a time where we, we were do, getting a lot of things from China also. Yes. Between 2005 till 2013-14, lot of things we used to import. We used to import helmets also. Okay. And we used to import helmets to other countries also, for to our customers. Correct. But all that we have shifted mm -hmm. to India, okay. or because in that time there were no visor manufacturing in India, mm -hmm. injection molded visors, yes. there were no coating plants in India, so China was competitive. Yes. But when we realized mm -hmm. and we started doing here, today are much competitive than uh, Chinese also. Correct. And sir, how do you balance uh, safety and fashion in helmet designs? And what sets apart Vega in pioneering and promoting helmet as, you know, like you said, designer headgear. So, uh, the ideology of safety and design, you know. Well, way back, 
when there was no safety, we started selling helmet as more like a designer helmets. Okay. Because people were not aware of safety. Yes. Now the education has gone up very high. Correct. As far as safety standards are concerned, we have maintained throughout our life. Okay. Even if my son wants to buy a helmet, he can go and pick up any helmets. I don't have to manufacture a separate helmet for him. Correct. So the standards, safety standards have been maintained for all the helmets. Okay. We pass uh, ISI. Okay. We also pass DOT standards of US. Mm -hmm. We also pass EC standards Correct. of Europe. Correct. And many other countries who have their own standards, we make to their standards. Okay. Yes, with the enthusiasm, biking and other things, now the helmet has become a part of April. Correct. And when it becomes a part of April, it has to be a fashion product. Every time people want something changed, yes. the designs are changed, the yes. graphics are changed and yes. everything is changed. Correct. So, okay, so this is the idea behind yeah. it. And uh, sir, uh, you have a wide range of network in India as well as global. So, how you are managing those network and how this network is helping you to grow in India as well as global. Uh, so, I would like to tell ladies and gentlemen, I myself is a you know user of Vega helmets and I love the quality. Um, I I have uh, you know driven from um, uh, my house in Bangalore to my hometown Raudkela, Odisha, and I have uh, I can proudly say I am wearing Vega helmets during 1800 kilometers. So, sir, how do you, you know, how do you maintain this network, the dealer's network and how these are helping you to grow in India as well as, you know, internationally? See, we have got uh, dealers across India. Mm -hmm. Some places we have distributors who have been taking care of uh, the dealers. Mm -hmm. So, we have a combo of distributors as well as dealers. Mm -hmm. And today, we have 1500 outlets that must be selling Vega helmets throughout the India, mm -hmm. either through us or through our distributors. Mm -hmm. And we have a dedicated sales team who visits regularly. Mm -hmm. With today's uh, date, uh, communication has become easier, mm -hmm. phone calls, WhatsApp or I mean of course email and all are there. Right. Uh, advertisement is through digital and because of product uh, generally we have not spent so much for the advertisement because word of mouth has sold our Correct. helmets Correct. Uh, and uh, so uh, as of now we have started putting up our warehouses uh, okay. across the country for easy delivery to the dealers Correct. so in North India we, no, one uh, other than a factory we also have a, a warehouse in Varanasi mm -hmm. We are setting up a couple of more warehouses in the country where we will be stocking. Okay. So within 24 hours, we will be able to deliver to the uh, dealers. Correct. And online also is becoming a big boom nowadays. Yes, yes. But a lot of people in helmets don't go in for online because they want to try. It's yes. like, you know, you want to try a shirt yes. and you want to see the fitting. Correct. So same thing in helmets also. Yes. Your helmet has to fit well. Uh, it has to have a proper snug fitting. Yes. It's as good as shirt. Some, somebody doesn't want even one centimeter shoulders to yes. be dropped. Correct. Same way in fitting also it's like yes. that. And they want to see what different colors are available, options are there. Correct. Uh, one thing I would about, about this, like we were talking safety and like we, helmets are very much essential to be part of safety uh, for all the riders. Uh, how do you ensure safety in your plant? What sort of steps you take because you are producing helmets, uh, you know, day in day out. So, what sort of, uh, you know, safety you are, you know, uh, yourself are taking care in terms of, uh, you know, in your production, uh, you know, plant. A any safety measures or you know, there must be protocols. Yes, there are protocols, of course. I mean, uh, in manufacturing, there are SOPs which Correct. you need to follow that. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as materials are there, have been already planned and designed before mm -hmm. manufacturing. For example, okay. I can give you small rivets also what you put it and hold the lock mm -hmm. has to have certain standards and certain particular quality. Correct. The same rivets can cost half the price also. Correct. But during accident it may not help you, you know, if it breaks off, doesn't work. Correct. Small example. Yes. Likewise, uh, proper EPS thickness is important mm -hmm. uh, to give the proper shock option test and other Correct. things. 
and we have a testing facility here once in a while we keep testing batch wise mm -hmm. to see that if some uh, suppliers are also maintaining or not mm -hmm. all the raw materials that have come there is a quality ins inspection at the end of the day we are making a safety product so it has to have standards maintained okay so now let's move to belgavi where we are sitting belgavi is we can say a manufacturing capital for karnataka right now because whether it's aeros aerospace whether it's different industry uh, the city uh, has a big ecosystem so can you l let us uh, let our audience know what is the uh, ecosystem you have in uh, belgavi second what is the mantra for success for vega one b uh, the the city as well because i see lot of uh, companies growing and uh, belgavi is number one job creator i can see in manufacturing because every company is giving good number of employment so what is this mantra for success for belgavi and for you and uh, can you talk more about the city overall the infrastructure what the city gives see belgam city first of all is located very closely to different uh, three states are connecting to mm -hmm. it's on a national highway mm -hmm. it communic uh, it is well uh, connected with railways airways mm -hmm. as well as highways correct belgam being a lot of army area also mm -hmm. lot of people come from all over the country to serve here for few days yes and being on the western ghats the climate gives a very big advantage them for them to settle down here correct and because of which this is become more of a cosmo town a small cosmo town you here karnataka maharashtra border are connected so the half the population speaks kannada and half the population speaks marathi mm -hmm. and the newer generation speaks everything correct kannada marathi hindi english are the four language most of the belgam at the age of 5 or 6 they start speaking oh. so education point of view they are there. they are learned yes and it's a very very safe town okay. you will see girls riding two wheeler on their own because of educational hub uh, at night Time to twelve. If you watch movie and if you come, you can see a lot of girls passing alone also. Okay. We never heard that in incident. Okay. So safety point of view, education point of view, climate point of view, Belgium is there. Okay. And Belgium is a very. Uh, it's not you know. Uh, it's a like upper middle class people town. Yes. Here you will not see anyone. I mean, if if you go to the any corners, you will see the lifestyle here is very good. And ecosystem. uh everybody is very into in manufacturing people are helping each other if you want to have any knowledge people they walk up to us and they ask us question and we try to help even if we starting an industry a uh, lot of people are doing from the college they are doing projects in the uh, they get projects also here internship is easily available so there is always a discussion once you are into that system you keep discussing about business 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 the next generation they then you have that motivation to Correct. do all the time Correct. so that's how i feel belgam is very very good place mm -hmm. connected with everything and that's why belgam is growing okay and it is one more thing you know very important to tell you this city is grown all the always without any support of government okay. it's only last 8 10 years government is getting involved and all there is nothing called government has come here given some kind of incentives or land because of maharashtra belgam dispute yes it was a ignored town till last 10 years correct so it is self developed but now government is also taking interest so things are changing here mm -hmm. faster basically correct. so uh, so entrepreneur spirit is something which is helping the city to grow and all the manufacturers so now let's come from let's move from manufacturing to this beautiful facility uh, uh, people say manufacturing is boring it's blue collar um i from your reception i walked down to your cabin um, i wanted to tell you ladies and gentlemen i thought it's some um, you know cafe or some technology company the beautiful you know work stations where people can sit casual like your helmets like it's great designs your office outside is you know it's like you can say genzi office not like a typical manufacturing office 
So, sir, what is the idea behind you know having this sort of setup uh, of your you know uh, team sitting? It looks very cafe and very casual. So, what is the idea behind you know keeping the I can I, I can say one but a different sort of you know sitting arrangements and the layout of your office? Well, there is no anything special. We are uh, I mean I think we got all a young crowd working. Okay. And. I am the oldest in the company, of course, since long. Mm -hmm. But uh, they have their own way of working, yes. and we are given that freedom to work. Okay. And basically, everybody is responsible to do it. Correct. So there has to be some kind of uh, space for them. Uh, it has to. We feel, you know, we should motivate them uh, not to go home. Yeah, to here. come to office. Come to office. <laughs> yes. And they don't miss the office. Correct. So that is the environment that has been created. Correct. They all are very friendly with each other. Correct. Uh, one thing that they have always learnt and which is a message I feel I should give it to other people is they always believe that they do the personal issues are different and the company's issues are different. Yes. They never fight or bring in uh, the fights where company has been affected. This is one thing I can boast about our staff. They always believed that we should help company in whatever we can. Mm -hmm. Even if we cannot help beyond a point, at least not to destroy. Correct. And with that attitude, you can see their body language, yes. uh, how they work and all. Yes. So that makes a lot of difference. Correct. Uh, so sometimes, you know, because of the personal thing, they want to put somebody down, they can only go through putting company down only. Correct. But that's not the case here. So Correct. that environment has been created. They only have created. Uh, we have never stopped them. So whenever what kind of office has to be designed or refurbishing time, they are also involved in uh, telling let's have this and let's have that, whatever. So ladies and gentlemen, I can say positivity, positivity in the air in Vega soft flows and Vega offices. My last question, sir, because I want, I, I want to take this liberty of asking uh, about the skill uh, which is this, you know, the education system, the skill gap the manpower thing because how you are man dealing with the you know skill gaps skill shortages and how is man you are managing this because you know workforce don't want to enter manufacturing and uh, i want to say people are educated but not skilled <laughs> company colleges are you know training to larger extent what you say is very true uh, but things nowadays you know i mean uh, we used to uh, face this years before mm -hmm. But we used to sit and talk to them and tell them this is how you have to work. Correct. Use your extra brain. Mm -hmm. Just don't follow what it is. Correct. And but nowadays people are having that. Uh, see, we are Indians. We are intellectuals. It was exposure that was that mattered. Correct. But now with the exposure and we do have a process Correct. before getting in the floor. They are been trained, skilled, and motivated. Correct. And. They also feel happy, you know, that they are making the world-class helmet Correct. through their hands. They are being a part of one of the world's largest helmet manufacturing company. Correct. So few things motivate them Correct. and drive them. Correct. And that little extra interest that was lacking, that by default it is coming here. Correct. With God's grace or our team's uh, effort, whatever it is. So we do not face that. They get day one Correct. hands on. Correct. Mistake do happen, but they have been handled it in a Correct. very nice way. Train them. Correct. So my last question, sorry, because this came to my mind and I don't want to miss it. Startup in manufacturing is something which is you know growing in India. Since you yourself have decade of experience in growing a company, managing it, what are your key learning learnings uh, in during you you want to pass it to the people who want to start? Because startup is failing in manufacturing because it's a very startup itself is a challenging job and especially in manufacturing. What are your key learnings you want to tell? See, there is no reason why startup has to fail in manufacturing. Okay. First of all, uh, there is a huge, huge demand for manufacturing coming okay. in. Okay. People are preferring to work with Indians okay. internationally. Okay. But starters are, startups are failing because they're not experienced. But what they should do, my suggestion is, okay. they should go to the local industrialist, mm -hmm. approach them, take their experience, Correct. take their help, Correct. 
ask somebody to mentor them. Correct. And I'm hundred percent sure there must be a lot of industrialists in town mm -hmm. who would like to pass on their knowledge to the younger generation. Younger generation does not mean it's only your son or your daughter. It's Correct. the entire generation. Correct. Anybody who would like to take my knowledge, I would love to give them. Correct. Likewise, I, I may be one of them. Likewise, everybody would like to do. So, the best is they should go for every small stage. They should talk to people and take the experience. They will save a lot of on their cost. They will bring in the experience uh, and give the feedback to them, whatever they have learned. To See, mentor also has to be motivated. Yes. To teach somebody else. Correct. So, when somebody comes and says, sir, because of you, I am doing today at this place, I will be motivated to tell another 10 people. So, startup are failing because they are not approaching people. Either they are shy or what, I don't know, but they need to approach. Correct. That will help a lot, I think. Correct. Uh, thank you, Sachinji. Ladies and gentlemen, do visit Vega website to check out, check out their latest helmets, latest design for your safety needs. Thank you, Dilip ji, for giving us time. Looking forward to see you soon in Namma, Bengaluru, sir. Thank, thank you, you sir. thank you so much. Thank Have you, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, sir.